What's up YouTube? Have you ever wondered if you could open an Illustrator file in Affinity Designer? Well, that's what we're here to talk about today. Welcome back, my name is Ben Nielsen and I'm a media design educator and we are here to talk all about whether or not you can open an Illustrator file in Affinity Designer. Now there's a couple of reasons that you might want to do this. The first one is you might be working in Illustrator and you might want to switch to Affinity Designer to save yourself some money or to get some of the features that Affinity Designer has and you have a lot of Illustrator files and you want to know if you're going to be able to open those in Affinity Designer once you don't have access to Illustrator anymore. Because once you cancel an Adobe subscription, you can't use Illustrator anymore and you won't be able to open those .ai files. So that's the first scenario. The second scenario is maybe you work in Affinity Designer, but you want to work on a project with somebody who's using Adobe Illustrator. And so you think they're going to send you a file and you want to know if you can open it up in Affinity Designer. This is a question that a lot of people have. And first I'm going to tell you what the answer is and then I'm going to show you what you can do, okay? And the answer is sort of, maybe, depending on what you're trying to do and what your file is like, you may be able to open it in Affinity Designer. Now it's not a very straightforward answer, but it's just because it's difficult because .ai is a proprietary file type from Adobe. So just like all of Adobe's file types like PSD and PDF and INDD, AI is a proprietary file type and Adobe gets to determine what like happens to it, right? And people can try and build in compatibility to their apps, but it doesn't always work. So with a file type like PDF, they've been very open about that. Um, basically anybody can build an app that can open .pdfs and Adobe will provide them with the code and the means of doing that. And some of the other file types they've been more tight lipped about. PSD has been around for a long time and it's used a lot and a lot of apps can open it, which is why when you go from Photoshop to Affinity Photo, this process is a lot easier because the PSD file type is pretty well known and pretty well it's able to be opened by a lot of different programs. And then there's like InDesign, and I made a video about this before, but that INDD file, nothing can really open that except InDesign, but the IDML compatibility file, other things can open like Affinity Publisher with some caveats to that, of course. So with the .ai file, we have a lot of caveats. This is the one that probably has the most caveats to it. So the first thing that you need to know is how you can get a file from Illustrator into Affinity Designer and there's basically three options. The first one is to save a .ai file with a through line PDF. So you're going to have to check a box that lets you save it in kind of a compatible PDF compatible format. And I'll show you how to do that here in a second. The other way is to not use the AI file, but to use either an EPS or an SVG file because those are vector file types. They can convey some of the vector information to Affinity Designer when you open them up. So let's go ahead, let's look at this on the computer. Okay, we're here in Illustrator right now. And the first thing that you're going to notice is I have kind of a weird document here. And why do I have this? weird document? Well, the reason is I want you to see how it handles different things when you use these different methods because it does get complicated. So one of the most complex things to handle is a gradient mesh. And so that's why we have this box here with a gradient mesh inside it because that's something that Affinity Designer doesn't have a feature for. And so it will be really difficult for it to handle something like that. And then we have just a regular shape with a fill and a stroke. We want to see how these different file types handle fill and stroke because that's really going to be the bread and butter of what you do here when you are bringing AI files into Affinity Designer. Then we have a regular stroke, then we have a dashed stroke because that presents some interesting challenges, and then we have a dashed stroke where we've used the width tool to change the width. Now that may not sound like it's anything too crazy, but it does present some interesting problems because the width tool is really changing the point size of that line along it, right? And so it's not consistent. So we have to see what happens when we try and do that. Then we have some regular text. We just need to know how text gets brought in. And then we have text with an envelope warp applied to it. Now you might remember that envelope warp is one of the things that Affinity Designer does not have that people wishes that it did have. So we really need to see what's going to happen when we bring in something like that. Because in Illustrator, we could go ahead and we could edit this. We could release it from the warp, that kind of thing. And we want to know what happens there. And then we have a paintbrush stroke. So this has been a complaint about Affinity Designer is it doesn't really have a robust vector brush system, right? So we have a vector brush stroke here and we want to see what happens when we bring that in. And this isn't anything crazy for a vector brush. It's just, just the standard regular vector brush here. So the first thing that you're going to want to know how to do is how to save this file. 
So when you go up to your file and you choose save as in Illustrator, you're going to get the save menu. You can see I have a bunch of files saved here in my Illustrator to Affinity folder and I'm going to open these up for you. But first I want to show you how to save yours. So we've got this as Adobe Illustrator.ai. We want to save it. You can see I called this one no PDF because I need to save it without a PDF so you can see what happens then when you just try and open an Illustrator file. We'll see that in a second. But this is going to be with PDF. So we're going to say AI and we're going to call it PDF. Okay, and then when we click save, it's going to pop up with the Illustrator options. And this is really important that you know that you have this checkbox here that says create PDF compatible file. When you check that box, it's going to essentially create a version of the AI file that can function like a PDF. Um, I don't know all the technical stuff of what's going on there, but it's a little bit interesting that it can do that. Remember, PDF is much more universally accepted than AI files are. And so we need to see what this will do. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to click OK. And that's the really important piece. If if who you're collaborating with doesn't do that, you, you'll have nothing, which I'll show you in a second. Let's go ahead and open up a Fiend Designer. I'm going to go up to File and choose Open. And the first one that I'm going to open is just no PDF. This is what would happen if somebody just sent you the Illustrator file without doing anything, without making sure that that box was checked. So let's just go ahead and click open and you can already kind of see in the preview there what's going to happen here. I don't really know what to do with this. Basically, it's giving you these PDF options. We're just going to click open and we just get this note that says you can't do this. So you need the PDF compatible file. So this is the one with no PDF. Now let's go ahead and do the one that we just saved, the one with a PDF through line there. And we're going to say open and we're going to say test one PDF. We're going to open this up and we want to see what happens. Now we get this box again and it says, what do you want to do? I leave these on estimate because I don't really know what to tell it to do. You have this option to favor editable text over fidelity. In practice with this file, I haven't seen it make any difference whether you do that or not. But obviously that's going to matter if you really want to be able to edit your text, then you might need to give up some of your design that's happened in Adobe Illustrator in order to do that. So you can check that box or not. And then you have group lines of text into text frames. We don't have lines of text here, but if we did, we can have that checked so that it will keep those lines of text together in one text frame. Okay, and then it says down here, all fonts used by the document are available. Now that won't always be the case, right? If you've used fonts from Adobe's library, won't be the case that all the fonts will be available. And so then you might have a problem where you have to replace some fonts. Okay, let's open it. Okay, right off the bat, you can see what's happened here. We lost our gradient mesh. We have, we have nothing. There's nothing there. We just have this blank empty box, which is seen as a rectangle here. It does have a fill of white, which is kind of pointless there. It's actually broken this into two rectangles. So there's a white fill rectangle and then there is a line rectangle. So there are two rectangles there and it looks like that has not happened here though. And this one we have, and if you look up in our swatches panel, you can see we have a red fill and a black stroke on this one. So this one with the gradient mesh was split because it didn't know what to do with that fill, but it knew what to do with that stroke. Just turn it into a black line stroke. And then this one transferred fine. No problem. It looks like we could even change the corner on that if we wanted to. So it recognizes it as a rectangle. It knows what it is. It knows what its fill and stroke is. So simple shapes, basic shapes, fill, stroke, no problem. Then we have our line here. And what we want to know is, is this a line? And it looks like it is. There's just a stroke on it. And we can move our points independently here. And so that's great. Now this other one is also supposed to be a line. And when we come down here, it is a line except that it lost the last two points. So these two, let me zoom in. This is a line on its own. And this one over here is a line on its own. And again, this is with the PDF. So we have our line, it's dashed. Let's go see if we can change that from being dashed. We can just change it to a solid. And then we have a solid line through here. But these are just solid lines. They're not dashed, they're just tiny little solid lines here. Okay, so. It, it does it, but it's not perfect, if you see what I mean. Then down here, this is supposed to be a line, but it's not. Each of these was imported as an individual curve of varying size. And so you can see it can't handle that width change on the lines at all. It just goes, eh, these must be shapes. So we'll make them shapes. So then you have a bunch of shapes. Now you can see how that could be a major problem. Bringing in a document that has a lot of that going on in it could really be problematic. Now here we have text. We want to know if we can edit this. We can... Get rid of text, we can add text in, we can type. That's great. Now this next one, of course, is supposed to be text. 
but it's not. This is envelope text and each one has been changed into a separate curve, which is set, can't be edited as text, can't be changed, can't be released from the warp, it's just a shape, okay? So less than ideal, let's put it that way. If you needed to edit it, that would be less than ideal for sure. Okay, then down here, what did we get with this brush stroke? Well, it got converted into a curve and this is now a fill. If I come back here to my swatches, you can see this is a fill, change that fill to black and that's all there is to it. If I come down here to my points, I can't select individual points on the line, I can select individual points along the edge of the fill. So not a brush stroke, can't handle that. Now, there, of course, I'm sure there are other things that I could have tried, but this was kind of an overview of things that I've heard are problematic that might cause problems when you are trying to work with an AI file in Affinity Designer. The next thing to note is what happens when we open it up in a different format. So what changes? So let's go ahead and let's go ahead and open our EPS file. What's up YouTube? I uh, interrupt this video just briefly to remind you about my courses on Skillshare, which are linked down in the description of this video. You can go ahead and check those out. I have them on Affinity Designer. I have them on Affinity Publisher and Affinity Photo, as well as a bunch of other apps that might be useful to you. So go ahead and check those out below. It really helps up this channel when you do that. Now back to the video. Okay. So this is our EPS file, and you can see we get a little pop-up here that Affinity Designer assigned a working profile. Okay, we can click close on that. Now let's look here. Here's our gradient mesh. And what has happened here? Well, it looks much closer than it did before. So this is the EPS. The AI with the through line PDF had nothing, but this one has something. Um, but why are there all these little, little lines here? Well, it's converted everything into polygon. Every place where it thought it could reasonably make that thing a fill, it's converted it into polygons. So let's open this up and you can see this group has groups upon groups upon groups in it. And when you get down to the group, you can see individual polygons, which each have their own fill. So it's not a gradient, it's not adjustable, and well, I mean, it's not like it's an uncool effect, but it's certainly not the effect that was there before. But better, at least, than the PDF. Okay, also there must be a rectangle here somewhere. Let's close out this group. There must be a bottom. Okay, so there's like clipping masks here. Somehow we're still getting a stroke. So one of these groups must have, oh no, there's a rectangle on top. There it is, so it's not in the group at all. It's just a rectangle sitting on top. So you would need to group that back in if you wanted that stroke on there. Okay, remember this is the EPS file. So here we have separated our Stroke, it's still a stroke. If you look up here in swatches, it's a stroke. That's what's black there. But it is not part of this red shape. This red shape is a separate shape entirely. So they put them together, but they're not even grouped. They're just separate shapes. Now the line, is it a line? Yes, it's still a stroke. It's not a fill. And we can move the points independent with the node tool. Now when we get down here to this line, still same thing, exactly the same as before. We've got two little lines on each side, and then the middle is one big line with independent points that we can move and adjust. I don't know why it has trouble with that, but it does. Now, when we get down here, well, if you looked in the layers panel, if you looked ahead, you can see these are still all curves. Nothing can handle the width tool. Okay, then is this text? No, this is not text. Each of these became a separate shape a separate curve. Okay, so no editable text at all. And then over here, of course, no envelope warp. These are just separate shapes. And then something has happened here. It's a little bit different, but it's still just a fill. There's no stroke to it. It's not a brush stroke. It's just a fill. And that is the EPS. So that's how it changes when it's an EPS document. Now let's open the SVG. SVG, scalable vector graphics, is kind of the one that a lot of people use when they're doing different vector projects. If you use Inkscape, you've probably used SVG before. But let's see what happens here. Well, this here is a group. It's a group, and a group, and a group, and a group, and an image. So for some reason, grouped upon grouped upon grouped, Upon grouped, it's grouped with a rectangle here on this like layer, and then you get an image file. So of course, you aren't going to be able to edit that. There's no fill on it, and it will pixelate when you get in close, but it doesn't have the little polygon lines. So it's a little bit different. Now, I don't know how many people are using gradient meshes in a lot of their things, but it, it is a good test to see how it handles it. And then of course, we just have this rectangle, which is kind of grouped in with this layer here. 
but for some reason it got pushed outside the rectangle. It's just kind of, it's a weird thing that happens. Then we have this. Now this one has come as a rectangle and it's like with the through line PDF, it's fully functional. There is a stroke of black and there's a red fill and we can even come in here, we can change the corner radius, we can convert it to curves. It's basically just a rectangle. Now our line. Our line here is still a line. So this one, it seems to be able to handle this best. It's most consistent on this line. Like the line is good. Now down here, what's this? Well, it's something, it's a group. It's kind of weird, but what's happened is it's actually grouped together those three lines. So it made three lines just like the other ones did, but it grouped them together. So that may be better or maybe worse depending on what you want to do, but it basically still these, these two hanging out on the end are useless. So you could just get rid of them, I guess. Okay, then down here with our width tool, what do we have here? Well, it's grouped everything together, but when you get down into the group, they're still separate shapes. Yeah, it's still not a line, which is what they were in Illustrator. Okay, let's see what the text, we can get in here, we can edit. Yep, works. Now what about our envelope wart over here? It's a group. So apparently SVGs like groups, but within the group, each thing. So at least it's organized. It's more organized than the others because it keeps them all grouped together as layers. Now down here, what's this? This is a group and within the group, there's a curve. So it turns everything into a group in the group, it's a curve. So if you've worked with SVGs before, you may be kind of familiar with this. Those are the three types that you can do. There is the PDF through line on an actual AI file. There is the EPS file and there is the SVG file. So those are your options. That's what you have available to you when you want to go from Adobe Illustrator to Affinity Designer. You kind of want to know what's going on with that file beforehand, because if it's just simple shapes, you're probably going to be okay. Um, likely all three of these would work. If there's nothing complicated going on, the PDF through line seems like it's probably the best option. It most closely resembles the original document. Again, once you start doing things with the width tool or gradients, gradient meshes, that kind of thing is where it gets a lot more complex. But simple shapes, something like a simple logo or icons or something like that, you can probably do. But once it gets more complex, if these are illustrations with a lot of things going on, maybe appearance panel things going on, transparencies, that kind of thing, it's going to get complicated really fast. And it really depends on what you need to do with that file. Like, do you need to make significant edits to it or do you just need to tweak a couple of things? That's going to determine whether or not this even works for you. Yeah, and that's that's basically it. Those are your three options. PDF through line, EPS, SVG is what you can do. Now, I would love to hear from you if you've ever done this, what other kinds of problems have you encountered doing this or if it's worked well for you. So go ahead and drop in the comments. Let me know about your experience with Illustrator going to Affinity Designer. And remember, if you are changing to Affinity Designer, I've got lots of courses on Skillshare to help you be able to do that. So go ahead and check those out in the description below. We'll chat in the comments and I will see you in the next video.